Welcome to the Leadership Podcast Away from wherever you're tuning in from Chances are you're tuning in from home Because it's a lockdown, baby My name is Ngox, the leader Glad to be acquainted with you If you're tuning in for the first time This is the Leading Podcast And today is interesting And I'm loving it Because I get to talk about something that I love And that is sports And I'm joined by two gentlemen Who are sports enthusiasts And uh, they actually follow sports to the T. You can check by the t-shirts that they're rocking. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guessing which oh, wow. teams they're actually supporting. Mm-hmm. There's that too. Max and Sam, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Naomi. Yeah. I were. Yeah, man. Long, been a while. It's, it's been, been a minute. A yeah, yeah, yeah. I go way yeah. back with these guys. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Campus yep. Radio. Yeah. Um, you guys are now doing other things. Max is an online creator. Yeah, yeah. Online yeah. content creator. Sam, you out at Super Sports. That is it. You're yep. also at OFM. Yes, sir. Um, how's it been, guys? How's the new jobs treating you guys? Man, so far, so good. I'm doing what I love. Mm. It's effortless. I mean, like... Even right now, you just waited for me to post something on my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. So while on, while on te- lockdown, so you, you I'm, I'm on the clock. Work. I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on the clock. I'm on okay. The clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. While he's on the clock, I'm busy scouring, looking for the latest breaking news in sporting world. It's my job. It's it's a twenty four seven kind of thing as well. There's there's no rest. I wanted to ask you, with the lockdown and everything, it's probably difficult for you as a sports anchor because I know you're on radio every day, right? Yeah. So with all these shutdowns and lockdowns, we haven't had much sports in a very long time. So what are you reporting on? Man, the last two weeks has been, well, this has been postponed, that's been postponed, that's suspended indefinitely, yeah. oh, cancelled. Uh, so every day, I think So you missed the, the cancel weeks, and missed the postponement, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been trying very hard to sort of sift through things and find the stuff that isn't being cancelled or isn't being postponed. Yeah. And yeah. Something just to, to sing a different tune um, in, in the morning. It's been a little bit difficult, um, but I think now that everyone's sort of gotten used to everything being cancelled around the board, a lot of other news is starting to pop up in other places as well. So it's given me a bit of chat. So many talking points. Um, let's start with the cancellation. Speaking of which, so many sporting codes have been cancelled. Let's start here at home. PSL. Yeah. Interesting one, but they took some time. Yeah, because Safa said this, and then Minister says uh, this, and then the PSL would say this. So. It was it was uh, Danny O'Don and Ivan Koza at loggerheads because and Natim Teto too in the mix. Yeah, because yeah. well, he had Te- to intervene. Natim yeah. Teto released a statement saying that the PSL is going to continue behind closed, behind closed doors. doors. Yeah, and then the Sava president says, "Well, I haven't taken out a directive that says so." Mm-hmm. And then all of us are side eyeing, like, "Okay, who's the real boss here?" Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest thing is well, there's a lot of conflict in that in that situation in, in in the sense that a lot of sports around the world, because coronavirus hit the rest of the world before it got to us. Mm. We're sort of following the lead of what the rest of the world was doing. Yeah. So, so in we, some we, places, we reacted. Yeah, yeah. So in some places, it was immediate cancellation. In some places, they fiddled with the idea of doing things behind closed yeah. doors. And that only lasted for about a week, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, before other sports bodies were like, not a chance. This is not going on. And I just think it was, a, again, it was an ego contest, yeah. I think, in, in the footballing world. Yeah. And I think at some point, it actually looked like we'll, we'll just be watching... Uh, PSL for the next month, you know, yeah. because it was still it it still hadn't hit uh, our shores that badly. So then it was it was still like okay, so at least there'll be some football locally. It didn't look as if you know it would get to that extent where uh, we are right now, where uh, it, it's actually closed. So shout yeah. out to Bloemfontein Celtic, by the way. Uh, they were the first team in the PSL to actually take a proactive stand yeah. and yeah. test all their yeah. players. Yeah. Um, and all the other teams followed suit after the announcement of, you know, you know that the, the PSL has to be stopped. You know, that I had a problem with. That yeah. they, they, they were very reactionary, the other teams. And they waited upon the PSL to actually... Say, I mean, most teams actually in the PSL stopped their training routines just last week. Yeah. yeah. Only. Yeah. They were still reporting for duty still, yeah. in groups, you know. And I'm sure some of them were even still traveling. So, and and it, it's really a bit risky to do to be doing that. At, Let's at talk about the yet. most contentious conversation right now. And uh-huh. I want to hear from you, gentlemen. I want to tie this to the PSL and the EPL. Now, yeah. Max, no guessing what team you're supporting, right? <laughs> so I kind of get an idea what views you're going to have okay, on this one. Maybe I should put my neutral hat on. <laughs> yeah, please. Do that. Let's do that. So, so EPL and the PSL right now, mm-hmm. log standings. If COVID-19 persists and the lockdown is longer than we're actually anticipating and now we have to suspend everything indefinitely throughout the year, what happens? Who wins the title? How so? 
So we have Kaiser Chiefs number one in the PSL. Yeah. We have Liverpool number one in the EPL. Yeah. So what happens? How do we how do we determine? Because also at play, you have a situation in the EPL of that number fourth spot, number four or five spot, yeah. right? Which is very contentious. Yeah. There's a team that has a game in hand. I think it's Sheffield United, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. I stand to be corrected on that. And now you also have the situation of Man City being banned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the verdict is still out on that. The verdict yeah. is still out on that. Yeah. So then, how do we determine the winners and how do we determine Champions League spot? I think it's very difficult for all the sporting bodies in this case because it is very much uncharted waters. It's the first time we've been in this situation. It's the first time so anything like this has a, happened. What, what's that? I don't what, think there's anything in the rule book that what, says. What's that law in cricket? Uh, uh, Duck with Lewis. Lewis. Yes. Duck with, Duck with Lewis. <laughs> don't you have one in soccer? <laughs> no, there isn't. And here's the thing: um, with in football, um, if a game is postponed or cut off, like maybe after 60 minutes, then it's forfeited. I think. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. before that, you can cancel the game if it's like in the first half or whatever. So oh, okay. in this instance, so in this instance, it's a matter of they, they are, we we are we're over the halfway line, right? Of yeah, the games. and and I think yeah. right now it's actually complicated. There are no right answers, and even if you know it really looks like Kaiser Chiefs and uh, Liverpool are running away with it. Uh, some people are saying, but you really cannot hand it to them. You mm. can't you just... You still have Mami Lodi Sundowns and Hot on the Heels. They're exactly. four points out. Exactly. And they still have a game in hand. Exactly. So that could change the calamity of the situation. <laughs> and, and it won't be fair. And the other thing is, that is being contested. It's, it's what about the European spots? What yeah. about the relegation teams? Now, uh, Leeds United and I think it's West Brom mm. are standing at a chance at being promoted. But what about them? Yeah. Um, and how do you then relegate the one? Exactly. Yeah. So, and you know, the your Aston Villas who are at the bottom will say, no, we want to play it out so that we could, <laughs> so that we could, you know, uh, no, reserve our spot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's the thing. Um, it's, it's really complicated. But what and, do you do? But, like, I understand the complexity of it, Max. Sam, perhaps play it you can chip in here. No matter how long it takes. How? Play it out. Look, look, I'm, I'm going to have to butt heads with you at this point. I, I reckon that, look, there's so, only so much time that we can take in terms of delaying things before we start affecting the next season and the year after that and the year after that and that yeah. sort of effect. In a situation where you look at EPL, where Liverpool have run away with the league thus far, yeah. Yeah. give it to them. You know, it's one of those things where if you can't get the season back on track, bring the fans back into Anfield. Here's a trophy for a fantastic season. You guys deserve it. Okay. Do you, do you still then declare null and void, which is something that has been th was thrown around uh, before? It was. Yeah, it, it was, was thrown, thrown around. around but I, I don't think it's fair because we've passed the halfway mark of the season. Got very far deep yeah. into the season. Well, we're closer to the end than yeah. we are to any Over other part. Over games. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. some were like, okay, we'll declare it. Okay, no, no. But if you declare it null, null and void, you still can't hand over the trophy yeah right? yeah but then okay what about the relegation spots do we then now what about the the, the, the that's Champions League then, I spot I think that's when then when you can do something okay, like let's where do you, playoffs that's let's exactly what I was going to say you, 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 you introduce Champions. a thing like guys, playoffs guys guys the situation at hand is that we can't even risk players mm -hmm. going and playing behind closed doors. Oh, no, no, not no. right now. Let everything settle. Let everyone come back to life. Let everyone come back into the world and start breathing fresh air again. So before we start new seasons. Before we start the new yeah. season. Let's before play, out the finish, yeah. play out the playoffs. Whether it's relegation, whether it's top four. Yeah. Whether it's, if, if you might even see a league final. Okay. Like, I would yeah. say in a situation where you've got things like the PSL, where it's yeah. so closely contested. Yeah. Yeah. Play out a league final. Like, you can't have an indefinite or an incomplete season it's just it's okay. weird verdict from the gents is that we have a playoff I don't know how you feel about that get busy in the comment section let's move right along next sporting code rugby what's happening oh man oh man there's a lot happening in rugby particularly because we've been paying a lot of attention to what was going to happen in super rugby yeah, yeah. now um, rugby Australia they wanted to do a domestic league mm -hmm. which was supposed to start on the 3rd which is next week yeah. that's when it was supposed to start but they've said nope not happening yeah. uh, and that also comes on the back of two Australian states have also tightened or strengthened their movement policies yeah. within the state so that's been absolutely scratched However, SA Rugby are in that conversation as well Ooh. where they're saying, let's throw something domestic out here. And here's the kicker. You could see the cheaters and the kings involved in that. Okay. Before I get into you, Max, mm -hmm. um, let's actually take a break. 
And we'll come back. We're going to touch base on Max's views on the rugby situation. Mm -hmm. Also, there's cricket to talk about. <laughs> there's some interesting developments on the cricket yeah. side too. Yeah. So yeah, stick around right here on the leading podcast. Away. You feel great when you when you when you know that you you did your best as a as a practitioner and somebody is breathing because of your skills it, it is the most fulfilling thing ever it, it is so enriching that you know you've made a difference in someone's life my name is Musa Ta and I'm an advanced life support paramedic Welcome back. This is the Leadership Podcast. This is the sports edition. I'm chilling with Max and Sam. We're actually, you guys are out here freestyling. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Listen, uh, we're talking rugby. Yeah. And yeah. Sam, you were shedding some light as to what is happening, especially with the domestica. What's going to happen to like the likes of the Curry Cup? What happens to Super Rugby? Um, wh wh what's the status update? There? So I think the biggest thing that's in question at the moment is whether or not Super Rugby is going to finish. And if it mm -hmm. doesn't finish, something's got to take its place. Oof. And that's where they were starting to speak about that domestic competition okay. which then would double up as almost like a second curry cup mm -hmm. but the biggest thing is again like the latest news that's coming out of there is seeing the Cheaters and the Kings getting involved in that kind of a tournament where they get to pin themselves against South Africa's Super Rugby teams. Okay. Now, if you remember a couple of years ago, Cheaters and Kings were given the boot from Super yeah. Rugby. Yeah, yeah. And that was all based on sort of like results and a lot of other things yeah. that went into that algorithm for uh, Sanzar to work it out. So, I, I'm actually pretty keen to see where the teams like that would fare. Yeah. Uh, particularly with all the talk that's been going on about South African domestic rugby moving to the north mm. I mean we've seen the Cheetahs and the Kings do that already obviously yeah. being a part of the Pro 14 yeah. so I think it would open up a lot of doors if that kind of competition were to happen before the Curry Cup okay so now I just want to understand what it, what would it entail would it entail now the EP Kings as well as the Cheetahs um, being rem or removing themselves from uh, the Pro 14 because that's their strongest squad that's their uh, um, flagship tournament yeah. that's where they sent the, the, the well at the moment as far as the Pro 14 mm -hmm. goes they've cancelled the final which was scheduled to take place at the Cardiff City Stadium that's mm -hmm. been scrapped yeah. and they've said that if a final for Pro 14 is going to take place it's going to go to the team that's got the best sort of results yeah. standings, fixtures and stats yeah. throughout the competition Okay. so they will then host the tournament which mm -hmm. whether you like it or not takes the Cheetahs completely out of contention Yeah. so sort of looking back the Cheetahs finishing the 2019-2020 Pro 14 season unlikely going to happen yeah. and that also introduces things of international travel mm. which is a big no-no at yeah. the moment so if we can keep teams in a bus sort of doing that domestic travel perhaps yeah. after we come out of a lockdown yeah. then it puts the competition back on the table uh, yeah, and I think if we're being fair um, even the Springbok squad has been at its strongest when um, we were playing in the Southern Hemisphere more Yeah, uh, yeah. when even the Let's talk about something else. We're spending too much time on rugby. <laughs> cricket. <laughs> yeah. I'm particularly worried on the cricket front because we're not really doing well. I know later on this year there was the T20 World Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. scheduled to take place. I think starting August, uh, October. Yeah. yeah. And that is also looking dicey. Yeah. I want to pose a question to both of you guys. Is this break perhaps a good thing for us to regroup as a country from a cricketing perspective? Because it's not looking good from a national perspective. I think... I think not. I think it w we had a good opportunity now, especially coming off um, the recent Australian tour. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've seen we the story play out before, guys. We've had successful or great tours True. leading into a competition. Mm -hmm. We get into the competition. It's almost as if all my, of that didn't mean anything. My favorite thing about our position at the moment is that right now, nobody in the world is giving Cricket South Africa a chance at absolutely exactly. anything. Exactly. So are you are you, are you you referencing even with the Springboks going into the World Cup? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I back, see where you're back going. Back in 2018, November, no one gave the Springboks a chance. Mm -hmm. True. I was and it's one, one of those, those people. things where they were rebuilding. And that's exactly what the likes of Jacques Cullis, Mark Boucher, Charles Langefeld and Graham Smith are doing with the side. There's a big rebuilding exactly. process. And, and, and with the box as well, just to go back to rugby as well, from your Difference. I mean, the fact that Rassi had also just been there for like a year and a half, you know, mm. people were like, okay, he's not going to do much. What's because, he going to do? Because yeah. you need four years to, to, to build, build a team. team. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. he had been there as director previously. So either way, 
uh, it was just him coaching the boys and building on the momentum he exactly. had. So um, right now we just have to see what this uh, uh, all-star uh, lineup with the likes of, uh, from a management perspective, yeah. you know, with your <laughs> Mark Bouchers, your Jack Cullis, Sean <laughs> Langefeld. Yeah, yeah, a, a lot of people are know? actually excited about that, but I'm not particularly excited about that, to be honest with you, because one, um, the certain cultural challenges. Mm-hmm that were deeply entrenched within Cricket South Africa, yeah. especially at a national level, yeah. mm-hmm. that, you know, CSA was trying to do away with, slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah. If you're getting the old boys in to be at a directorship level mm-hmm. of the squad, you're not really taking care of the problem. So, essentially. What are experience the conversations? Is wrong? I think my other thing is experience. It, I, never, I get never mind. Yeah. I never get mind that. that. Yeah. I get that. It's a, it's a double-edged sword because now you, you also have, yeah, you have the experience. These guys have, have done, have been at the highest no, level. No, but at, at coaching, at managing. Yeah. That so, was I, I'm going to give you something which is very fence-sitting. You decide which side of the sword you want to fall onto. Okay. So, here's what we've got. If you rewind Cricket South Africa back about 15 years, Years, yeah, where the guys who are currently the head of all the management were the guys who were the heads of the team. Jacques Cullis, Mark Boucher, Graham Smith, Sean Pollock, uh, A.B. de Villiers was sort of just coming in at that time as well. If you yeah. look at that era of cricket, I like to call it the, the arrogant era of South yeah. African cricket. Those players sort of fell away. And the last person in that school of cricket was Faf Du Plessis, yeah. who started developing very similar symptoms, if you can call it that, of when the when the guy started falling out of the setup as well. The same way that he seems to be reaching the end of his career. Yeah. Now, AB De Villiers looks like he's going to come back because the rest of the arrogant era seems to have made a comeback as yeah. well. Is it good for South African cricket? No. I'll let you decide. I'll, I'll let you decide. <laughs> I have my own opinion, mm-hmm. and I'm very. I feel very strongly about it. I love the fact that all those guys are getting involved in management and so on and so forth. Yeah. And maybe it's time for AB to do the same thing. Mm. But I think his time within the squad and within the setup, along with Five Duplessis, the whole arrogant era of South African cricket, needs to either step behind the scenes or disappear. Let's talk. In closing, I want to hear from you guys. We currently have a lockdown. Sports are suffering because sports is an active thing yeah. Yeah. that you have to do outside. And we're talking about team sports in this instance. We're talking yeah. about team sports yeah. too. What element of 4IR can we introduce to save this or save us in this situation? If the lockdown actually turns out to be longer than the 21 days in the South African context, how do we as how do we keep our athletes active and fit and ready for whenever the leagues are going to resume? I think Sam, as a cricketer, you you could you could talk about this uh, from a, I mean, how you can introduce VR, I guess, into this. Yeah, look, it's so one of the biggest things that's happening, and the really cool thing, what what Formula One have done. Okay. They've taken all their cancelled Grand Prix to esports, and they're trying to get their current drivers in the season to take part in those races against no other way. YouTubers there was a, there and was a races. There was a tournament last week. They did the Bahrain Grand Prix. There was a tournament last week. They did the Grand Prix with, as well. with celebrities. Yeah. yeah. So celebrities. imagine racing with Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. So that's what they're trying to do as well. A little bit different because in Formula One you can actually sit and drive the car with the simulation. Yeah. But if you look at things like rugby where you've got to hold a controller it's slightly different yeah. but I think it's going to be very important particularly for the guys who are taking care of the programs the mm. sports scientists the physios and everyone else behind the teams and then again for management to be able to give the guys like a cushion period after after the lockdown is lifted yeah. that's nationally and also internationally I think that cushion period straight afterwards is going to be crucial uh, to the future of our, our sportsmen and women Max? Okay for me um I really think maybe introducing a system like you, you, you know, the Nintendo Wii. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, something like that could probably help, but you also need to be physically involved. You yeah. Know, because um, just working on your batting technique yeah. uh, might not be enough if you don't have a ball coming at you. You know. Yeah. Um, so I think the nice thing about them is that that they can still uh, practice uh, indoors uh, in the nets, perhaps. You know. So they wouldn't necessarily need to use tech, uh, uh, technology in that in that sense. Um, I mean, you can just use a ball machine, things like that. And uh, for But for them right now, it's just making sure they stay match fit, they eat healthy, and um, that and that's con- difficult conditioning. It, it yeah, goes con- with discipline. Yeah, conditioning yeah. as well is very, very important. Quick hits. LeBron James released a statement saying, if he is forced or compelled to play behind closed doors, he's mm-hmm. not doing it because he's playing for the fans. Mm-hmm. Your views of playing games behind closed doors? 
if we are pressed to get to that point? So I watched very stupid Any example. Sport. I watched a stu- very stupid example. A WWE production behind oh, closed doors. Terrible. Teams. And it was absolutely appalling. It was terrible. I've loved the WWE since I was a two-year-old kid. How about include some sound effects, like a cheering crowd? Uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? So, and I mean, you look at um, Max, who I mean, you will be very familiar with, uh, Virgil van Dijk, was like, yeah. if we had to lift the, cl- lift the cup... Be, In an empty stadium, yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be heartbreaking. That's what, that's what might happen right now. Yeah. So, look, I'm all for the guys the playing for the fans. the fans are there. You just, just can't see them. Yeah. Yeah, it it won't be it won't change. It won't be the same atmosphere, and I think this is why they don't even like. I was watching like with the PSG game, the the stadium was empty, and I'm like, but at least uh, uh, um, have like some sound effects on over the PA, but but it still wouldn't be that atmosphere. It it won't be the same. same. You know, you it it isn't. It really won't be. Also, want to get your views on that? Get busy in the comment section. That's how we wrap up our discussion this day. Listen, gents, thank you so much for pulling through, yo. It's a pleasure, bro. Pleasure, All man. the best. We need pleasure. to have a part two. I don't know how. Perhaps we'll <laughs> take a look at technology and what it presents us with. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you guys have your schedule ready for your lockdown? Do you know what you're going to be doing? Waking up every day? Hey, man, I'm waking up and going straight back to work. Still a media provider. One of oh, the, yeah, one essential, of them. essential yeah, services. Yeah. Lucky you. So uh, I'll be giving you sports updates okay. throughout the rest so of the week. So we can weeks. tune into OFM. OFM. Yes, sir. Breakfast show? Yes, sir. Yeah, punch your show, man. What's the name yeah, of the show? Yeah, OFM, uh, big breakfast for now. And then in a couple of weeks, it's going to shift over to the good morning breakfast on OFM. And uh, yeah, man, sports there 6 we go. I'm looking forward yeah. to that, yeah. yeah. Well, Gizella, are you working from home? Uh, for me, I'm working from home. I'm working from my couch. Uh, I clock in every single morning. From six to nine, yeah. uh, not six to nine. Wow, that's my <laughs> from job. Se- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> seven thirty to four thirty. Uh, I'm a corporate boy by day. Yeah, I wear. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the leading podcast. Uh, see you again on the flip side. Keep it safe and sanitized.